you gotta have some talent. See how you are as a human being. See how hard you work. See how smart you are. See how creative you are. But you gotta bet on your fucking self if you wanna win. I started with nothing and I'm leaving with nothing. I'm betting everything. That's it. Okay, today on Business Untitled, I got a legend in music, my friend, my brother, one of the guys that I came up with, kind of looking up to for real, for real, Orlando. What's up, my brother? That's a warm welcome, man. I appreciate it. What's up, man? It, How you doing? It's a real welcome, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for being here with us with my co-star, Mike <laughs> Novogratz. So? And my other co-star, Dave Barry. So, yo, for the people that don't know you, which is very few, I want to talk about some of the artists you discovered. I'm going to let you get into that a little bit. You know, uh, uh, 10 years ago, you know, music started changing. Who was your and first, first, first artist? The first artist that I that I had that I worked with? Yeah. Ransom. Ransom. How did, how did that, what made you even want to go into music? I know what made me. What made you? What made me want to go into music? Yeah. Let me see if it's the same shit. I just like the music. I feel like I could do something. I seen the opportunities in it. And I say, you know, this is a business. I feel like I could do something. I could make a major amount of money. Money was money. good at it. So, you know, I, I feel like I was good at it. So I was out there. I could, you know, really tackle this. What made you think you was good at it if you never did it? Just had a passion for it. Sometimes when you have a passion for something, it it, it outweighs everything. It outweighs your your common sense, you know, passion. So you know. Yeah. When when did you first kind of get that feeling that you knew you were good at this? How old? Were Maybe. You? I, I was already. I already had a studio and I was doing music and we started putting music out, and then DJ Clue. We started getting on DJ Clue mixtapes. Oh, once, for real? Yeah, once we was on Clue's mixtapes, he started <laughs> shopping me out. Yeah, That was kind of big back Clue then. Clue shot me out. That's when I was like, nah, this is possible. I thought I could make it. And it's like Clue shot me out every mixtape. DJ Clue was like... Spotify. The old, Yeah, he was yeah. like Spotify. He was Spotify. Like, if you made it on DJ Clue, it was like the New York Times talking about your fun. So, or, so this is what year, roughly? This is like 98. Damn, Clue shouting y'all was kind of big. And if you was on a Clue mixtape, it was like there was no Spotify. There was nothing like that. So if you was on it, it was like being on the on the hottest. But it was like being on Rap Caviar. He was Rap Caviar. Mm. He put out his mixtape, whatever, 15 to 18 records he put on that mixtape. That was what everybody wanted to listen to that month. Uh -huh. And if he say your name, you got popular. <laughs> so, you know, for years I've been listening to his mixtapes. And then once he started saying money, I'll say, oh, hold on. I think I could do something in this business. How'd that even happen? How old are you at this point? There's 98. You're 20. I'm probably like 24. Got it. How did that even happen, though? Like, how did you get in touch with Clue? Well, I, I lived in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. And I went to high school with Ransom. So I was always a Ransom. And then Joe Buttons was from Jersey City. He used to rap. And he used to be with Clue. So we was friends with Joe Buttons, so he put us with Clue. Oh, wow, so that's, that's how crazy. So we met Clue, and we just started. So from Ransom, did you get a deal with him? Nah, see, the music business was different. The streaming wasn't invented at this point. But they were still giving record deals. It has slowed up because now people were bootlegging everything. Mm. So now you went from bootlegging, everything is on a mixtape, so nobody's monetizing anything. So that slowed up a lot of deals for people. Where there was no monetization of music. Everybody was just getting it off a mixtape and that was it. So the business was in a in a Transition. funny place at that time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it went from there, them figuring out what Napster was doing, what they could do to stop Napster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they was it took them a couple years to figure that out. And that's when they figured out the streaming service. And then after Ransom, you found one of the most legendary artists. Still to this day, rest in peace, stack bundles, right? Well, I I, I was just good friends with him because he came. Somebody actually brought him to Clue, and we'll be in the studio every day with Clue. Yeah. And then I just started hanging out with stack bundles every day. But that was, you know, 
Yeah. That was at a time when no Instagram, no Facebook, mm -hmm. nothing like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you had to just know these people to see them. Mm -hmm. Where was that studio? That studio was in Queens. In Queens. How you end up with a studio Queens. in Queens coming from Jersey? That oh, was my your studio? studio was in Jersey, oh, but the one with Stack Bundles was in Queens. He'll come to the studio in Jersey occasionally, but he'll really record in some guy named Miller's house in Queens. So that's where we really went when we worked with Stack. What was like the first move you made out of like high school? You know, the first like, move? What, like music? Kind of, yeah, like, yeah, what was like the first thing you did to kind of start starting this career? Like you graduate high school, you're messing around with this stuff. You said you went to school with Ransom. I mean, Ransom really got me into it. Mm -hmm. And he started rapping and I was like, oh shit, you know, I think I could, you know, let's get a studio, let's start doing music. And, so you, know, you was I'm managing like, him? Yeah, I was like managing him. He was yeah. signing my label. Uh -huh. <laughs> the 18, but I was, I was young. Wait, did you actually sign him to your label? Yeah. What made you do label. that at 18? I just <laughs> figured I could do it. And I had a passion for it. Like, yeah. yo, you want to rap? Well, let's do it. You know, I ain't rap. I ain't nah, because you know how it go. Most people's just like, yo, this is my man's. I'm going to help them. And we're going to make it together. And then the rapper blow up and just leave them. I, that happened I had a, label a thousand already. times. I had a label. We, you know, we had a label. We was... You know, we had a good studio. We had a label. We had a nice little community. That's we cool. was all working together. What high school did you guys go to? To uh, Ferris there. in Jersey City. Jersey City. Still yeah. there. Still and there? Me and Ransom went over yeah. there. Dave's a Jersey City yeah. guy, kind of. Yeah, no. We and Joe Buttons with the Lincoln. Uh-huh. And so then did you, you took an internship at 300? Is at that 300. Right? When was that? How old? Celine. When I took the internship, I was old already. Yeah. Yeah, I was already like 32, but I was hanging out with Kaiser, and at that time I had a lot of relationships with, with rappers. I had good relationships with rappers, but I didn't have the knowledge mm -hmm. to work at a record label. I never had a, at that point I had never had a job before, so I just didn't have the skills to go into an office every day and just show up and this is what I'm supposed to do, so I just... I was hanging out with Michael Kaiser a lot. Michael Kaiser was the president of Atlantic. So now I start hanging out with him for a couple years and I start seeing how he's doing it. Mm -hmm. So now I start hanging out with him all the time and going up there with him all the time. And now I start getting a repertoire. All right, you have to come here early. You have to come here at this time. This is, you know, what's expected of you if you're going to work here. So then I asked him, I'm like, yo, Kaiser, you know, so I've been coming up here a lot of the years with you, you know what I mean? get an opportunity and he was like hey, you know there's really no opportunity up here right now but Salim was an A&R up there and he was leaving and he was going to 300 and he was like yo look just come with me to 300 mm -hmm. it's gonna be me Kevin Lior and Ty Moskowitz and he was like and you could just come with us and that's when 300 first started and so that's like a dream team of the music business you know and I'm the only one that doesn't so really is that know your first anything. job after? Or that, not? That's my first job ever in the music business with them. So you found an artist over there? Yeah, I found Fetty Wap. Damn, Fetty Wap. With Wapp. Salim, I worked for Salim and Salim allowed that me big, to work with Was Fetty Wap big Salim. record? Trap Queen. <clears throat> you made that record? Nah, he had the record already. How you found him? I went to a, I went to like a open mic night in Hackensack, New Jersey, a mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant. That's crazy. And he performed, and I liked it. That's crazy. And I was like, nah, I think you, I think you got something special. And I just got his number, and it's still cool with him. And it's so cool. When I and typed in the video, I seen it, and I was like, oh, this, this guy's a star. And it took nine months, but I signed him. Mm -hmm. How much views that video had? When I seen it? Yeah. Like 10,000. You lying. Trap ass. queen? I'm dead ass. How much that record went on to sell? Over 10 million copies. That's fucking yeah, crazy. Definitely. 10X. <laughs> 10X on that one. It's cool and that, that was my first record, so you know? Yeah. It's, it's cool that you were in that. You had this passion, studio, right? Like the mixtapes. And then you kind of took a step, which some people might say, like, as more corporate or, you know, you know, step in a different direction. But really, that ended up, like, rounding you out, right? To definitely. put you in a position where you are today, in a sense, without that it would have been hard to get to where you are. Absolutely, and then all, everything I learned on the way, because you know, all those yeah. 10 years of me being out there, I learned how to communicate with artists. I, I, I met producers, I got a lot of relationships, 
without that, I'd have just been in the office with our relationships. So, you know, once I got in the office and put it together with the relationships, you know, it was up from there. So, Fetty Wap, 10 million. I guess that was, like, your first real, like, Start. was that your first, like, time you was like, oh, shit, this shit is happening yeah, on like, a major level? Yeah, like, when, when, when I first You remember seen the first it hit, time hearing it on the radio? Yeah, but I remember the first time it hit a million views on, on YouTube. I couldn't believe it. Like, oh, this has got a million people seeing this video. This is crazy. What was the first time you heard it on the radio? I heard Flex playing it on the radio. He bombed it or not? Yeah, his bomb going crazy. How that made you feel? It felt good. I felt good. I felt happy for Fetty Wap. It was going to change his life, you know? I felt good, too. It was change my life, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we both going to move up, you know? What was the follow-up record again? That was pretty big, they too, had right? the My Way with Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. one went on to sell six, seven million copies. That's an amazing fucking moment. And, and after know, that, what, you went to Atlantic? Then after that, yeah, like... What um, made you leave 300 with all that success there? I wanted to go to a major and, and see what it was like in a major. I, I had worked there for a year. I already got all the knowledge I got from Lior, Salim, and Todd, and Kevin, and I wanted to go to a bigger system to see how I fare up. What was your first find at Atlantic? <laughs> Kodak Black. <laughs> Major, <laughs> how you found Kodak? Um, Fetty Wap's manager. Oh, word! Yeah, he, he sent it. He was like, "Yo, it's this kid in Florida. Everybody's listening to." He was doing a show, and I listened. So I was like, "Now nah, I'm flying him up here. He's fire." It's kind of fire. I flew him up here. Everybody was laughing. Oh, you sent a song? All right. Oh, everybody was laughing yeah, at signing office. Kodak Black. Yeah, they thought it was a joke. Did he bl- he blow up out of the gates. It, took a, it took a couple months, but he people respected him. Mm-hmm. That's kind of crazy. So me and you always talk about this on the back end. So I right, Kodak, Fetty Wap, a little bit to do, a lot to do with Ransom. Somehow, uh, you know that relationship with uh, with uh, three hundred turned into you finding probably at the time their biggest artist, right, or their first biggest act. I mean, they had the Migos, so the Migos were big. But, but Fetty Wap out, so Fetty Wap definitely put the lights on for, for a couple months. Kept the lights on. So Kodak Black, then A Boogie, who also PMB Rock, rest PMB in peace. Rock, rest in peace. Who was I know was like a your brother. Yeah, you know, you know, you've seen us all together all the time. Yeah, they were good. Guy, good soul, humble, mm-hmm. super good guy. It's funny when when we found out. Uh, PMB uh, passed away. We was all together. Yeah, it was fashion. It was fashion week. Oh shit! It was fashion week. A year we was ago coming today. from a year ago today, roughly. Roughly today, we was and I left them to come see you. He was at the label, and I just remember that shit was just like such a surreal moment because it was bigger than music with you and him. I knew that for a fact. Oh, definitely, that was my friend. Yeah, that was my family. Yeah, so it's like PMB rock. Kodak, uh, and I know you signed a lot, of, a lot of other acts, but who else blew up to that level? PMB, Kodak, A Boogie, XXX, XXX. I almost signed XXX. That was fucking crazy. I missed that one. Yeah, you, know, uh, <laughs> you went left. You went right. We could. We, we used to like compete, but you know, friendly competition. I can't. Absolutely. You know, there's yeah. a lot of artists. We and change funny. artists' lives, so we competing and changing people's now lives. Now we so switch places. So we was competing when I was at UMG, mm-hmm. and he was at Warner, and I left to go to U- Warner, and now he's at UMG. Mm-hmm. So we're back to competing. Mm-hmm. That was on the other side. Now. <laughs> you on the other side. So you know, we got a competition to change people's lives. So it's a good competition. It's a good competition. So, how many records do you think you sold? I mean, you all the artists that I signed. All the artists you signed. Man, all the projects I A&R, probably like 250 million. It's 250 million records sold, which is wow. fucking crazy, right? And this is a conversation you and I had when I was like, I found a way into the music industry. You don't need a dollar per record, and you're pretty rich. I, I know. <laughs> so that that brings us into this. I'll Me and him had a concert cons- record. Then. Me and him had a... Um, a conversation because I came into the music industry a little different and I started making a lot of money, right? Like doing a lot of deals, shit like that, like 
probably some things I shouldn't have did. <laughs> like, Mike gave me that uh, lesson on ethics. He was like, yeah, you did do something. Or whatever. I did some deals that, whatever, wasn't favorable to the labels at the time. Um, but it wasn't really nothing like bad. It was just like me flipping artists, calling around and, you know, having a bidding war. And my thing was I always it was like, bro, I would always tell you, remember, I would be like, damn, you sold 200 mil, 250 million records. You made these people probably three, four hundred million dollars. Why don't you get your own shit? You remember we used to have this conversation? Because I was in a contract. I know. And I was just <laughs> like, I used to pound it in your head, like, bro, you gotta, like, gotta get, like, you gotta go do your own shit. Cause, Facts. like, and I did. You seen I did. No, so you like, did. And that's what we getting into. Like, what was that? Cause obviously you making a, a secure amount, right? You, your family living good. You could do whatever you want. But now, you left that label to go take a chance on yourself, right? Absolutely. I could have stood at, at Atlantic and just rolled my points another 10 years and retired there. Mm -hmm. But you got to bet on your fucking self if you want to win. What made you take that huge leap? It was all your your, your past turning. A little bit, no. but <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, man, this, this, is, this is what made me take the leap. I started with nothing and I'm leaving with nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm betting everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. And how, why was it such a huge leap? Tell, tell me more about that. Why, because it's what, what like, makes it such a huge leap? It's like, it's like the leap I just took, right? Uh -huh. I went from a cushy job at Republic Records, right? Mm -hmm. Big title, making a lot more a year than I'm doing right now in the first mm -hmm. year of my business, maybe right, even right. two years, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's going to work out. Right. So it's like leaving Fortress, guaranteed money every year to go build Galaxy yep. or leaving Goldman to go build Fortress. Mm -hmm. You know the reward is going to be, or leaving your company to go build Irby, yeah. right? You yeah. know the reward. You know what you're going to earn versus mm -hmm. if this work out, right. I'm going to make 10 times more, but it's right. always that huge possibility that it don't. Yep. So we're both Kind of doing the same exact thing right now. I mean, now. man, you got to take the game, but are you you're going to tell yourself, man, look, man, I'm going to work for the seven-figure salary, or I'm going to cash out at nine figures. I'm going to try to cash out at nine figures, <laughs> yeah. just like we just seen some of our friends do. Yeah. We just seen people do it. Coach K, we had him here a couple Mike weeks Karen. ago. Mike Karen. Joey Ae. Joey Todd Ae. Moskowitz. Todd Moskowitz. Dior Cohen. Elliot right now. Elliot. So you know it's a lot of people that's How doing this. How many black thing. executives cashed out for nine figures? Well, that's five right there, six. I don't know, but coaches those part. are all Jewish guys. Coaches one. So you know you got to. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all your boys. Nice, nice industry they knowledge. They are my boys. They're good guys. It's <laughs> about intelligence, man. Coach was intelligent enough to do it. You got to prepare yourself. Who else, you though? Anybody else? You. You I, do it. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that. Built the label and cashed out for a bunch of money. I mean, I guess the people who build them and, and wasn't smart enough to cash it out. You got to be smart enough to do your business. If you're smart enough to do your business, you'll get paid every time. Some people ain't smart enough and you can't be mad at, you know, you got to be mad at yourself for not doing the right business and having the right people around you. Everything matters, everything counts. So what you look for in an artist, though? First, you got to be talented. That's first and foremost. Yeah, but you gotta, I don't you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have some talent, no though. You got to have some talent. No, a lot you, you of gotta, a you lot don't of guys be we signed of superstar never... level, but you got to have some type of talent. What, what do you mean by some type of talent? Because we both you know gotta we be able to hold a note, can't rap. hold a melody. You got to be able to have, do something. You got to, you got to have some type of talent with this. So shit. you never you signed be able to a kid that was just going crazy on 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 the internet. No. All right, well, I, Cause I, going crazy <laughs> on the internet ain't gonna last that long. But yeah. if somebody has if somebody has talent and is really good at something, and you put them to work and you put the stuff out, people are gonna listen to it regardless. But now now you have to find a, a star factor. Why well, I want to sign this guy for this guy got a star factor. I want to see him, and then I gotta hang out, and I gotta want to fucking be around you. I gotta want to be around you. If millions of other people want to be around you, if I don't want to be around you, then I don't want to sign you.
So I got to be around you and see how you how you are as a human being. I feel you on that. So then you got to come with some talent. So you got to have some talent. See how some you talent. are as a human being. See how hard you work. See how smart you are. And see how creative you are. And then I gauge everything. See how much you have of everything and see what I could do with you to add on to all of that. And then we'll go to the next level if we can. Work ethic, a big piece of that equation? Like you, you, Absolutely. You, For me, that's you, like one Without of work ethic, you can't make it. Right. So yeah, how, how do you try to figure that out? How do you try to figure that out when you're meeting somebody? I'll, I'll put you, I'll work with you for two, three weeks. If you can't do a certain amount of songs, I already know that you just don't have the work ethic to do it. Uh -huh. Because even if, if I'm there with you and I'm flying you out, you have to be able to do a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. Even if they know, you have to be able to do them professionally. At least, even if I don't like them, they mm -hmm. have to be, they have to be structured right as a song. Mm -hmm. If not, if you can't do that, if you can't accomplish that, just work through it and just keep pushing it out. I don't want to sign you because you're not going to work hard. Right. It's like productivity almost. It's like work Definitely. ethic, but like translating into like how productive. I look at is everything, this person, man. That's right? why I don't, yeah. I don't try to take L's with artists. How many L's you took with artists though? No, I never took a loss of the artist. How? Because even if I never took a big swing where I gave an artist a big deal and they didn't sell, and then the ones that I did sign for not that much, they all made money. 22Gs is very profitable, made Atlantic Records millions of dollars. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Absolutely. He, he does between four to five million streams a week for the last three, four years. That's very profitable, and that was probably one of my smaller deals. And that's going to stream forever. So it's like I ain't really take no L's when it comes to music. When did you sign? When did you go over to Capitol? I went to Capitol. I started in February. In February. Was, was bringing back Priority Records or kind of relaunching that a big part of what got you excited about that? Absolutely. To me, Priority Records was the label that taught labels how to be labels mm -hmm. the labels that taught jimmy Iveen what to do that mm -hmm. taught rockefeller what to do that taught dr dre what to do that yeah. taught jay prince what to do that taught ruckus records what to do you know so priorities yeah. really historic and really important in, yeah. the, in the business of rap music where all the moguls that were back then seen their blueprint and did it and now nobody's doing that now Besides P and Coach K. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a school for these new entrepreneurs like Priority Records was. And that's why I was so happy to bring something back like a Priority Records to see if we could get those same results yeah. that you want to see, man. It's you a, feel me? Definitely it's a pretty cool. It's them. When you stop and think about it, it's a pretty cool opportunity to take something that legendary kind of like you know legendary. like they started rap. around right and yeah, and, yeah and then to just like be able to like remake that and they into started something. gangster rap yeah and they were two right guys from canada two white guys man from canada oh really that i didn't they know they started gangster rap you know how, how they made their money man oh they put out the california raisins that was their first album <laughs> and they went from the california raisins to, to nwa yeah, they had nwa for a while all right, I, I thought NWA was their first. Nah, but California talking about races. that, right, because this is something like real, like, gangster rap. We all love it. Music brings out a fucking different type of emotion in you. Like, to me, music, for, and maybe it's because I'm in music, right, but music resonates with me more than movies. A movie somehow, some way... I understand it's a movie. Well, a movie's two, three it. hours long, so you can't watch a movie and get a feeling of a song that's two, three minutes long, and you can keep listening to it and listening and to it. And you actually know, or at least you believe, the kid or the guy or whoever on the other line is a story behind it. You kind of know that's his real life. Or a lot of rappers lie and shit, but for the most part, you believe it's his real life. You kind of know... This kid came from Flatbush, this came, came from Jersey, so everything about it feel real, right? But since we've been talking, we talked about two rappers that's passed away from violence, right? Yes. And we could sit here and talk about fucking 
maybe how many rappers you worked with in your career that's probably been murdered? More than five. Me probably the and, same. And then faint not not that not made it yet. Ten or more. So here's the real question, right? And I ask myself this shit a lot of times too, like we 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 love gangster rap, right? We all from the hood. I'm from the hood. You from the hood. But it's like, you ever think like, fuck, man, are we like, are we influencing this shit in some sort of way, shape, or form? I mean, the, no. The violence? No. And I'm going to tell you why I think no. What we're doing is we're businessmen. And we, we're actually giving people what they want. If people were rapping about libraries, me and you gonna sell records about libraries. We just giving people, they might not like the message we giving, but that's what the people wanna hear. If they wanted to hear something else, me and you will be selling it. We don't make the music. No, but they wanna it's, hear it because it gives you a feeling and it's, it's done well, right? So that feeling that I've listened to music at times when I'm fucking mad as fuck and I'm like, ah, I'm about to go fucking fuck some shit up. I mean, it's, it's, but I got the sense not it's to. Millions, right? it's tens of millions of songs. Don't listen What's to those songs. What's your thoughts on that, Mike? It, I was gonna say it's 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 a endemic to art in general, right? Like, does the art influence the culture? Or does the culture and what's happening influence the art? Yeah, and it's it, listen. There was a point where this was the first time these communities had voice, yeah. and so it was like, listen to us, goddamn it, and that's what resonated with people. Yeah, right. You think about the early rap early hip hop it was literally the first time a lot of these communities were screaming out yeah and so it resonated in their community it resonated outside their community right yeah we're now 30 years in or 25 years in 50 and, what 50 years in 50 hip -hop. Years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah i guess right 50 yeah, years yeah. wow damn i'm getting old <laughs> i like to think that was 25 years <laughs> but just it, celebrated it, but it's a fair it is a fair question because a lot of it now is it feels like people acting the part to sell the music as opposed to a lot of the people part. oh no that i mean it doesn't it's music though so you know i don't i don't fool you can say whatever you want it's freedom of speech yeah. like yeah. no 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 and i'm i'm with you, you that's know, why michael I'm, jackson michael that's jackson why I'm saying still, them songs he didn't write them that's why i'm still in it right but a lot, a lot of if artists don't write their music, say, though, Mel. So, you know, it's like, you could, what, what message are you conveying? You convey no, the message you want to listen to. 100%. But if I sit here and say, damn, at times, like, you know, I was King Vaughn, right? The night, that you remember this, I went to meet them in the studio. I never met the kid before. Uh, what's my man named that managed him? Um, track. Track, yeah. Shout out to my man, Track. I went to meet Track, went to meet King Vaughn. I was going to sign them, wanted to sign them. I don't know if it would have went through, but made tracking them an offer. Um, the next, I met like, I don't know, seven people in that studio, in that studio that we now own. Me and him bought a studio together. Um, and then the next day, I think like four of them was, three of them was dead, one was shot. It was the artist I was going to sign. The manager got shot, and I think what, like two other kids got shot. I never met, never met them before, right? The funny thing is, I it was, they had a couple of issues, whatever. I knew both sides, right? And me and Track stepped aside to call uh, somebody on the other side to kind of get them two to talk. The person ain't pick up the phone, and then the next day. Some crazy shit happened, you know what I'm saying? So that was a moment for me. I was just like, "Damn, this is fucking crazy," because like, in order to be authentic in rap, you want to hear authentic story. You want to know that this kid is really about that life, or they're making it up and they're doing a really good job at making it up. So if I say sometimes I don't struggle with this shit, I'd be lying. I think it's interesting if you look back at where what 
happened 20 years ago, 40 years ago, right? When NWA was coming out with their stuff, people thought it was the most threatening shit that was ever invented, right? Like, I mean, think of how much controversy that, right? And you watch the newscasters are like, you know, NWA, you know, they're like, they're so goofy about it, right? And it's just freedom of speech challenging really what's going on, what's actually going on in the ghettos, and it's reflecting that, right? Is what they were doing was reflecting that, right? They were just giving voice to that anger at that point in time. The question is, has and, it become now a self-perpetuating, and is people, that bad? But even then, that's what I mean, the argument have, was. You go look at Chicago, the, the amount of black-on-black violence in Chicago is going but, one direction off the charts. But, in but, New Orleans. But Chicago's a screwed-up city. In Memphis. In every urban capital in America, black-on-black violence is up. And so the question is, does rap have a, a, a role in that? I, I think I'd it's, argue, it's such a I'd complex... Argue I'd argue it does. I'd argue it doesn't. I don't think it doesn't either. Yeah, uh, I'd argue just, it doesn't. I think... You yeah, go on. I mean, it, it just, it's just music. There's it, nothing more than that. People say the know? same thing about video games. They've said that they, they used to burn books. I think books video games also the, does. But listen, they used to burn <laughs> books in the square because, like, Lady Chatterley's Lover or... You know okay. what I'm saying? And it's funny, you look at it now and you're like, oh, come on, that's ridiculous, that's a book. But this is literally what went on. I'm not saying on. we should ban it, I'm just and saying you make a decision where your energy in life flows, right? Where your but, energy flows, your results go. And you can make a decision to go rap about shooting people up or murder or produce it. You can make a decision to do other stuff, and that's a personal decision you make. I think it's when, when it crosses over to inciting violence is a different story. And I'm that's, not, I'm not arguing and that's even... But I'm saying like I'm I'm saying like that's not legitimate. That's where like f- look we have free speech, right? First Amendment free speech, and free speech is a really complicated issue, right? You can't yell fire in a movie theater even though it's free speech because it's inciting panic, right? And there's certain things that like drill rap, right? Drill, right? You could say at some point in time maybe that is insightful and should be curbed. But for the most part. I feel like these things are just telling the story of what's going on. I 100 and, and that's why I said I'd be conflicted with it at times because I 100% know that it's just art and storytelling, right? Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, damn, does a 19-year-old, 16-year-old kid get that this is just art and storytelling? But you could, let me put it to a different way. I don't think we should ban porn. I know, but porn, especially porn that deg- degrades women con- con- uh, consistently and completely, mm-hmm. I just don't want to be in that business. I don't have to be in that business. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to be in that business. A lot of money in the business. Uh You don't have to watch it. You don't have to be in that business. Yeah, That easy. Why don't you think we should ban it? What? I think there's free speech. I think if people want to... You like porn? I don't watch porn. (laughs) How do you... I'm not a porn guy. (laughs) Unless you watch porn. I do not watch porn. You can put me on a lot of... But you had to at at, at some point. What? At some point. When I was a young kid, you watched a tiny bit of it, but... Young kid, how young? I'm not a porn guy. VHS ever? Michael Daffy. Put me on the lie detector. I'm not a porn guy. VHS ever? <laughs> Some hustler magazines way when I was a kid. Well, porn, porn's funny because it's like the famous quote by the Supreme Court, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know how to define it, but I know it when I, I see, see it. it. And, Learn you know, and, and that's that line of First Amendment. It's the same. I think it's a little bit the same thing. But I, I'm always amazed when I go back and look at things about, like, NWA or something like back in the day. How NWA I, was a bit different, though, because NWA had, like, a message, fuck the police, that <laughs> yeah. was, like, like the, was and still fuck with people to this day. Not all police is bad police, but there's some police that abuse their but power. That was at the time when that was what was going on in the community. The yeah. police was abusing them and stuff. For sure. They came up with that song. 100%. That's what they was going through. Right. That's right. And that's what I'm and saying. That now only, we, That was the only thing they had to fight now, back, your voice. So now rap we is going a through, voice to fight. Now we going through violence with each other. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's being voiced now more than fuck the police. We're still going through violence with the police, but that's just being voiced a lot more now, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, in a, at the same token too, like rap music saved my life. Rap music saved your life. Nice. There's a ton, ton, ton of black people who rap music saved their life in the smallest fucking way to the biggest way. Coach K wouldn't be Coach K. Jay-Z wouldn't be Jay-Z yeah. without rap music. Yeah, but back then, you see, we had people we could listen to that we... You see, nowadays there's no trial core quest. There's there's J there's Cole. No, there's no groups like that, but J there's Cole. There's J Cole. There's Kendrick. He don't drop a lot. They don't drop that much. There's so that now, kid we tried to sign. What's his name? Tizo touchdown. Damn, Damn we should have signed that's that. That's not kid. what people want to hear. So it's like now this is the type of music people want to hear. 
that when, once people change what they want to hear, this ridiculousness, because I think it's ridiculousness. I'm talking about smoking somebody you somebody's dead friend. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's that sad, shit is crazy. And it's in poor taste. So once once people don't want to listen to ridiculousness like that, we'll get back to real music. But it's but to be what fair, I'm guilty. I'm one to. of the people that like to listen to that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody comes now and talking so, some ridiculousness, man. When you like it in the streaming, you're gonna sign them. Hundred percent. Let me guess. If, That's if, why I said I'm conflicted at times. If, if you guys are looking at new artists right now, like what are like what are you looking for in that? You know, and in terms of right now, like what are you know what do people want to hear? Define that anyway. I let Orlando answer yeah. that. Then I answer. You know what's what's. I mean, we talked a little bit about work I mean, and just, talent and stuff, but more like kind of like currently today. Is it? Is there any kind of message you're looking for? Is it more agnostic to you see, that? There's never a message I'm looking for because you're looking for great artists and there's a message that they're creating that is different than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for something that's creative and different and makes me feel, gives me a certain feeling. Mm -hmm. And now, now, you, you hit now, sign too rare, right? A sign too rare. As a human being, you yeah. got different feelings, you know, so sometimes you... You'll see a street guy and listen to it. I think this is good. I feel good. Sometimes you see an R&B guy. Oh, you know, I, I like this type of stuff too. So, you know, it's just on a And that's activity. the thing with being a good executive. Like, being a good executive in music, and O has that down pack, and I like to think I got it a little bit too. Like, it's the love of music and love of art. Yep. Like, like, we're not guys who specifically want to sign a drill rapper. Right. But if a drill rapper is streaming, if a drill rapper makes me feel like he has talent, makes me feel something emotionally, yeah. I would sign him. Same token, I signed City Morg, who I didn't even really understand their music at the time. O wanted to sign them. Remember that? They like, didn't even they, have a genre at that they time. They didn't even have a genre at that time. Mm -hmm. We just they invented the felt genre. something that was like, I don't know what the When you fuck met this them, you knew they were stars. I met them, I knew they were stars. They were I knew stars. it was different. I knew... Something was crazy. The same kid we almost signed, Tizo Touchdown, who who's blowing up. Drake just posted him. Fucking, he's on Travis Scott album. We flew him out six years ago, and tried to sign him. Like, we had never seen anything like that. He was just like this weird kid with incredible music. You know what I'm saying? So like mm -hmm. with me signing somebody too rare, too rare was extremely special. He just had this star energy, like. So for me, it's like I don't have to trade in fucking in in any specific. I don't have to trade commodities. I could trade everything. I just gotta one feel like it's gonna make me money, but more than money, I gotta feel something special about it. Feel like I I understand what's happening and I believe in it. Right? Absolutely. Mike, you're extra quiet today. You still thinking about the porn? <laughs> Let me listen. All of these things are, are gradual lines, right? You, Let's say you meet some artist who comes out there dressed as the KKK, uh, but he's really talented and he's got spits lines. Like you're probably not going to sign him, right? Like there's a line at one point that you say, ah, I just don't think this is good for society. I don't think it's good for my brand. I don't think it's the energy I want to pitch. And so each of you, each time you make a decision, you're, you're factoring all that stuff in. I'm not, this is not criticism. It's just the way human nature works. I mean, it's really any business, right? Like whether it's you in mac, you know, in macro investing, if it's me in real estate, in, in, in yeah, a you're sense, gonna, you're, you're, well, in a sense that, no, it's you know, the no, same there's, because there's I'm sure you've made shit. a trade yeah. in your life before that, Mm. I'm not saying you traded KKK fucking But that swear. maybe wasn't great for, but, yeah. like, you know, obesity, right? Or something like that. Or or in, in terms of, like, real estate, it might play out. It's like, well, you know, like, ah, this is really oh, you cutting can make an up. Argument, like Warren Buffett's what? biggest thing. I love Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has literally right. led like, to more obesity, right. more health problems in America than almost any company. Anything. Right? We think about Coca-Cola yeah. as a great company. Coca-Cola, like, is a purveyor of cancer, you know, <laughs> liquid. Yeah. And so... So I'm saying we all have to make those decisions 100%. on some level. Because I'm saying even Coca-Cola is not... The, I, I can make the analogy to it's like signing somebody you don't think has a healthy message, yeah. in a sense. But Definitely. Uh, to, to Orlando's point, if the market accepts yeah, it except and likes it... The only thing it, is when you're working hand-in-hand oh, hand with someone, it's just interesting. Like, if you own a pension fund that buys bad stuff, you're like one step removed. 
when you're working hand in hand with someone, when he's your guy, it's just more personal. And so you better like the guy, as you said. You know, you better feel good about the guy. Or you're gonna feel shitty about yourself. Well, I think I think, it, I think he said mostly he does like the yeah, guy, like saying. respects them, and I'm you not, know, and, and their message is true. Guy. Yeah, and I think it's about music is storytelling. Music is storytelling, and sometimes that story is so good that it makes you feel a fucking emotion. Definitely. Do you guys understand a a contract, a music contract? Pretty much. How so? Wait, what? Like, do you understand the, <laughs> the, cause you guys are business guys. Yeah. You, you understand the return that a label gets on artists? So you, you can make know, it, you can make an argument that, that the yeah. labels are literally the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're being nice to the label, you say, well, they're the venture capitalists. If you're being tough on the label, you're saying, hey, they take these unsuspecting kids, get them to sign five years of their life or 15 years of their life away before the kid knows what the talent he has. And they, so venture, and they profit, you know, and they profit venture the capitalists. The you know why? Because it's exactly what, what we do to some extent. I, I give you an analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's I give, yeah, let's I let's give you an analogy so yeah. you can understand. Yeah. All right, Mike, you want to open a restaurant? Cool. I'm going to give you a million dollars to open this restaurant. You need to give me my million dollars back. And then you need to give me 80% of the profits of this restaurant forever. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You would never open a restaurant on that contract. And, no, but but oh, that's yeah. not never, necessarily true. I'll tell you this, Mike. That's, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's you would do. You'd open a real estate deal. building. A twenty percent royalty. You'd open a real estate building on that. Uh, we don't contract. do deals no, no like that. Do that. <laughs> no, we don't. That's, that's, that's a regular record deal, man. Yeah, but here's the thing, no, right? In, but now a lot of artists don't make the money back. I was just about to say together. You you do a lot of deals. Here's the thing, right? A record label does lose a lot of money on a lot of artists that don't make the money. But the only thing I would say different to that is. This is a loan that you only pay back if you're successful. Right. If you're not successful, you don't it goes away. Back. And then if you uh, if you did make that million dollars back, you could come back and say, hey, my restaurant needs another loan. I get it. I get it. For five it million dollars. My restaurant needs another location. But this location, it, it's why, this is done. That's why... So really successful guys get really angry at the contracts they signed uh, because they're like, I can't believe I signed away that much in my life. Uh, I, and if you're unsuccessful, you're like, thank God I got the money. I, th I, th simple. Yeah. I, think, the, I think the controversial thing that, that happens in music that doesn't happen in real estate, because to be honest, that's just how a real estate deal can work, which is that this company puts up, you know, 100% of the money and takes 80% of the profits. That's like very typical, like with an LP structure. But the difference is, it's not me. You could build. It's, you could I go can, build fifty buildings. That's right. You can't replicate. I'm not locked up. David myself. Barry. For, that's right. Your, time. For the rest of your There's life. Only one of you. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's not. A, it's not, not linked one, with oh, the person. Okay. Not one property. I just raised yeah. twenty-five right. million dollars for Bojangles. My investors own eighty percent. Pro Wait, gonna that's go again, no, 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 no. It's the same thing. No, it's not. It's not at all. How is not the same thing? You're doing seventeen other jobs. No, no. We don't why, own you. Why can't I? Why can't can can artists do seventeen other jobs? We don't, you can't do a seventeen other records. And quite frankly, your next Bojangles, we have no, we have no call. If you decide, I'm now gonna, I'm so successful as I'm gonna do Chick Fil A's. We don't have any call on that Chick Fil A. Can't do Chick Fil A's. So that that Our makes no sense. Yeah. That's Our, like saying an artist uh, could go sign another record deal. Oh, he could do another record. <laughs> Mike, all I'm saying is no. It's the same thing. I can't do any other chicken. <laughs> you can do a pizza. Listen, possibly. All all you're saying is but that when we're it's talking to about the person, that particular deal. I'm it's the same you, thing. The deals that young kids signed. Why the whole crypto thing started with music was saying, hey, people want to own their own IP. What you know, Taylor Swift got in a huge fucking fighting match with, with uh, Scooter Braun over. Owning I don't know, but allegedly Scooter did some fucked up shit. But what I'm saying is, Mike, it's the same exact thing. It's not the same thing. No, 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 no. It not is. The same thing. For You're Bojangles. Wrong. You're just wrong. No, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. For Bojangles, <laughs> for ever, my investors. We because we invest we bought those stores. You didn't buy the stores. We but that's the stores what I'm you. saying. That's the, sa but it's the same it's thing. It's not your investing it's in some kid's human capital on the comp. 
It's you could go get invest in it as art. It's what? Man, but he only got one art. You could go get fifty other businesses. He's yeah. trying to tell. I mean, what, I'm what, talking about both. The kid don't got another like, business. Like, these kids could, do the these kid could go do fifty what, other businesses. Let, we have no control over that. Yeah, the artists use it. If they go do real estate tomorrow, we can tell these kids we own their real estate. Really successful. No. Let's take a really successful performer, bring him on this podcast, and ask him if he really appreciates his first contract. Here's the thing: his first contract, he. With any success, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. This is very important. With any success, he could go renegotiate his contract. Yeah. Well, well, How many well, artists yeah. you had with success renegotiated their contract? Every single one. Every yeah. single one. To yeah. much fair and much better deal. Every How single many, last one. Well, well, wait, wait, wait. wait. I'll, I'll, I'll invite two on. How many, How many companies you invested in, whether they made you money or not, they came back and said, hey, you know, I just made you, I'm making this number up. Five million dollars. Tons of them. I Hedge now need. I changed my fees on people all the time when I was successful. So it's the same sure. thing. What? Yeah, it's the same thing. You have to get their thing. consent to do it. Right. Right. But right. So, the, the, yeah. the young kids don't have the consent. No, but like yes, every, they do. Like, it's literally the same thing. They just got to come and ask I, I, the label we'll, we'll after ask. success. Let's, let's, let's end the question. We'll, we'll, I, we're we're, we're, we're going to agree to disagree on this. No, but we we but, do but, that. Because you guys are the yeah. guys that exploit the young guys. We're not no, exploiting no, no, no. the young guys. I don't. I, they I, all get a chance to read. If they make it famous, if you don't make it famous, it's not exploiting. If they make it, they got a great deal. From what I heard, Rihanna's first deal was for $250,000 in pocket. I don't know if it's true or not. Rihanna is. You think Riyad, Kanye, all these guys, they renegotiated their contract 17 times more favorable than they could go to their LP and any other business and say, hey, you know what? I know we started 80, 20 building this building, oh, it's all, but I made all you the, back money. Now yeah, I want to give you 20%. What you're missing, Mel, yeah. in every other business. No, but that's, but that's your wrong, Mel, though, because you could do that, though, because every album is a building. So I could build this building with you, and then when we get to the next building, I could say, yo, look, man, I'm not, no, giving, I'm not doing this building with you unless I get more money. When I, when I invest in a movie, I'm pretty right? sure yeah. somebody has done that to And you. the director kills yeah. it. He doesn't need my money for the next movie. I don't own the director for life. A hundred percent, but you own his next you, nine listen, albums. All right, let's 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 clean this up. All right, <laughs> 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 on this we're gonna bring on a performer. What I would, we'll bring on a performer, okay? But bring one on thing, a, we'll one thing on I did learn performer. from Mel months ago, and Orlando's in the same business, was because I was under an impression, right, that if you signed an artist for five albums, right, and that's associated with them, that that deal never gets recut. But what he was saying, which I was surprised by, right, and these guys both confirmed, is that as that artist gets successful, they come back to the table and renegotiate that contract Absolutely. multiple times because their personal services and their enthusiasm is really what's driving the ship. Exactly. So, like Nine Inch Nails, that was that whole famous story where they didn't want to do it, right, and they went on to another, Jimmy Iovine negotiated the thing. I don't know all the details of it, but... Once that became apparent to me, I was like, oh, okay, so it's it, it's not as weighted and as you might the, think And here's another first. part but to anyway, it, right? We, if you sign a kid for a million dollars, right? Let's yeah. say I signed Too Rare for a million dollars for his first album, right? When Too Rare makes another album, I have to give him probably a million five, right or wrong. Definitely. So it's every, it's not you signed for a million dollars and you owe me five albums. So that's just it's, for the first That's album. just for the first one. I now have to, if I funded your restaurant, every time you open a new restaurant, I have to fund you even more than I did the last time. Well, only if he's successful. If you want the album, you if don't you have want to take the album, the album. We don't have to take the album. Yeah. It's all invested. Was, it's not much different from VC. It's not much different from real estate. If it, anything, I feel like you get a little more leeway in music to come and renegotiate it, your contract. It's basically yeah, just IP, right? And IP's been, you know, is, is extremely valuable, right? It's just another form of IP. And in this instance, it's just linked to a human being. So it gets a little bit more complicated. So, for instance, in our business, so, we originally <laughs> tried in, to have, like, okay, non-competes. You're going to work for me. You can learn everything from me, but you can't compete. Now in California, they're illegal, right? Because people say, you you own your own IP. No one can own your IP, right? So like in California, non-competes don't work. In London, non-competes don't work. They still work in New York for a small amount of time. It's really interesting, this idea of intellectual property and who owns it. Right now, I'm on well, no-compete. Well, it is, but... Yeah, you're on no-compete. Yeah, for yeah. a year. Yeah. It was what, almost over. Let me ask you this. For, like, switching subjects, we can get off this 
this <laughs> mud pool <laughs> for a second. Bella has. He told me um, to quiet. <laughs> what, when, when you look at, like, priority, um, and you've been there for a year now, a little bit more. Six months. Right? Six months, okay. Six months. Um, what's, what's, you know, kind of like, what's your success look like over the next few years? Like, what would you love to do? What inspires you about it? You know, where do you really want to take that, that awesome label? I want to take the label to another level. I want to sign a, a whole new generation of acts and break them. Different regions like Priority. I want to do the same thing Priority did, but just try to do it with my spin on it. Mm -hmm. What they did was so legendary that, you know, for me to sit here and say I'm trying to outdo what they did, it'd be right. very hard to do. I'm just trying to add on to their legacy and just, you know, the, the two owners are great guys and they want to see their legacy keep going and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to Make it happen for him. That's cool. So you're, you're part Puerto Rican? Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican. You're full real Puerto, Puerto Rican. Full yeah. Puerto Rican. And so there's this Puerto Rican, you know, Daddy Yankee, you know, the, the, the reggaeton stuff. Any that Spanish music is humongous. Are you linked into that at all? Or is Absolutely. That a... I have a Spanish artist now that's doing well, and mm -hmm. I work with two other Spanish artists. One of them is really big right now. So, you know, I, I put a studio in Puerto Rico during the pandemic, and uh, I just started working with Spanish music as well, uh -huh. English and Spanish. That's very cool. I'm going to put some spurs on with men. We'll go sign some country artists. Like, you know, we uh -huh. should sign some music. We should sign Mike. Royce Alger, son. Eli There's Alger. no different than you. Yeah. You guys yeah. do You guys do real estate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if there's nothing here to do, yeah. and you got to go to Tennessee to put some fucking buildings, that's yeah. what you're going to go do. It's true. It's true, right? You know, it's the same thing. Same, well, there's no artists thing, over here. Different, you know? but same. We're going over here. We're going to yeah. go build over here and go build this community and get this going. And, so let's switch the interview for a second because you always got a lot of questions for me as far as investing. These are the guys I learned investing from and uh, a lot of life lessons, honestly. So n now you have the mic. You, I want you to ask the finance guy, the real estate guy. I'm a little bit of a real estate guy now, but I'd rather you ask these two. Let's switch <laughs> the interview. Right, to give, start, start to, to give the hood yeah. some fucking game. <laughs> All right, Mike, let's give the hood some game. Right let's now. give the hood some game. All right, so now let's say I'm, I'm not going to say from the hood because you don't got to be um, disenfranchised to be from the hood. You can be from anywhere and be, you know, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunate. I'm an unfortunate fellow. I don't have the, I'm not as smart as everybody else. How do I make it out? It's hard. Listen, I think from an investing it's almost fucking. Let's, let's keep it serious. It's almost fucking impossible. Yeah, it's almost impossible. It, it, it is how, almost how you, impossible. It's hard. How do you make... Uh, now, now, you a worker for somebody forever and, and accept that? You might not even get that job because you, you just try. said you're not smart. And, and listen, listen, you, you got And if you're smart, you make it out. You can't help everybody. No. But so, you, listen, for each individual person, you're right, you got to seek out as much education as you can, as much hard work as you can, and as much mentorship as you can. It's hard. There's some mentorship deserts, right? You go to some neighborhoods, there's no one to mentor. And so you got to find mentors. You can find them online. You can find them in books. You can find them in, on, you know, on you know, YouTube. Um, I, would, I always tell people their first investment, like everyone's not supposed to be an investor. Everyone's not supposed to be an entrepreneur, right? There's lots of plenty of good jobs. There are teachers and firemen and, you know, people that work in warehouses and construction. And so... What do they do with their money? First investment everybody should make is real estate because it's the one investment if you're in a neighborhood that's moving up where you can get leverage. FHA gives you a loan on your first house. And so under, you know, you, you, you have to get 5% down only uh, if it's an FHA loan. And you're getting 95% leverage. And so that means I put 5% down on a $100 house, it becomes $200. I'm making that whole second hundred by myself on five bucks. So the, the, the way most Americans have gotten a little bit of wealth is through real estate. And so for almost everybody, that's not shooting for the, the moon, right? That's not thinking I'm going to be a centimillionaire who's just like, I got a job, I got some money and I want to invest. <coughs> real estate should be the first thing they look at. And mostly because you got to live in your house. How yeah. about now with the, with the rate being so high? The prices of real estate being so high and people just not even be able to afford it, anything. It, it's a damn like, you know, when, when we were coming up, some, it was possible. Yeah, I, now, how I, the I, fuck do you this, achieve this? I told this story. There was a guy that ran for president a few years ago, and he said, the rents are too high. The goddamn rent's too high. I forgot the guy's name. 
And I, I was remember thinking, that guy. I was yeah. thinking about my first place out of college. I was in the army in Alabama. Four of us lived in a, a house for four hundred dollars. We paid a hundred dollars each uh, for rent for a month. And I was making after tax fifteen hundred bucks as a helicopter pilot. So I was like, that's one sixth. Six percent of my salary was going to rent. People are now paying 35, 40 percent of their salary in rent. That's what they tell kids. Hey, spend a third of your salary on rent. And I was like, well, I was paying six percent. Even in New York, when I moved and I was working at Goldman Sachs, I was paying 16 percent, not 36 percent. So the rents are a lot high. Absolutely. And mortgage payments are a lot higher. So it's that much tougher. Right. That's just the reality of our world. Even 25 years ago, you could get in a house for three grand. It's why, quite frankly, you're not getting a no house with three, yeah. three grand down payment on a, on when, a one percent or three percent. You're getting a yeah. house, though. When yeah. Dave, when possible. I, when Dave and I, I graduated from college, we're old motherfuckers. When we graduated from college, seventy percent of Americans thought their children would have a better life than they did. Today, that number is thirty-five percent. Absolutely. Right? It's it's it is harder right now. So let's just be realistic about it. It doesn't mean it's impossible. There's still people that live the American dream every day. You're mm-hmm. one of them. But it it is harder. Absolutely. How yeah, many people I, from your neighborhood made it to where you made it to? And, and music and business and whatever it is. If I, let's say I grew up with 400 people. Yeah. Maybe one or two. How many people you grew up with got murdered? A lot, but at least 30, 40. It's crazy. Crazy. I'm at maybe 200. I know zero. How many you know? They got murdered? Yeah. No, nobody close. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. And if I'm talking I, about I, Puerto Rico and I lived out there and I was talking the hundreds. I, I agree with Mike that the house is or, or buying a piece of real estate is a really important first step. I think it's, you know, it, it's such a complicated equation right because part of the reason those rents are going up is because supply is always constrained because of how long it takes to get approvals and such in like desirable areas so there's this constant tension between build more housing but new york city housing is shut down like shut down right now like you cannot do housing because the tax incentive program without playing inside baseball is not in place and so basically virtually nothing is going forward in the city anything you see is from two years ago when this was in place and so there's always these tensions um between that but i think if you look at it over the long haul when you know you talk about when like you could buy a house for three thousand dollars but your salary was probably like a third or you know and and i don't dispute that the per- percentage that people pay for rent has gone up um and for mortgage, down payment and for the well, down payment that's a big well, thing yeah d- down payment, most people down don't payment, have the, down payment. the government can solve right like the government yeah, can for solve FHA, that for FHA. For, with fha and first time well, what do you need and, and i generally don't know yeah. what do you need for the government to help you well they just they need to not make it a 20 percent down payment which is what they wait, wait say that again sorry instead of, in, like the, the biggest constraint on people buying houses or buying condominiums generally is the down payment it's not as much the monthly carry i understand that right now we're in a particularly high interest environment for the first time in 30 years but for the most part it's people scrapping together that 20 percent down payment that stops them from that so if the government and puts so something you can do in an fha loan where you can for do five percent but that's yeah. only up to i don't know what the number is when i was a kid but, it was like 196 thousand yeah. dollars but it's probably three hundred thousand dollars. But they so. should. But you know how fucking that. impossible that is to get. Well, first time home buy as well. No, so. no, no. The five percent. I'm saying. So, even a five percent. But a, so of a, a two hundred thousand dollar house, five percent is ten thousand. There's no two hundred thousand dollar house right no, no, now. No, but but they need to raise those limits to a million. I agree. Million, you know, yes. because there's nothing to buy in the right. Agree. And, and yeah, and like you know, regular people, right? If you raise that up and and had the government bring that down payment down, it would help. Yeah, what do you think the median homeowners. cost of a house with, in America is? Wait, say that again. Medium but, cost of a house in America is. I don't know. It might be different know, in America. It could be when you add in the whole America. Yeah, when you add in these America, areas, it's, it's kind of. What is it? It was a trick question. Right. Around New York, it's really high, and the rest of America gets yeah. much lower. And so it's interesting. We only find homeless, really, in real big numbers, in places where housing's really expensive because of the stupid regulation. You know, L.A. and, and San Francisco, you can't. My daughter, fixing, it up, fixing a house, of it, she did 23 different permits, right? There's so much bureaucracy to build housing. Uh, you, yeah. you know, you have a housing shortage, 
And so you've got homeless everywhere. You don't have homeless in places where rents are cheap. Yeah. Just so I don't leave the audience hanging, the average, the median home in America is 400,000. Median home in New York City is 800,000. That's great. I didn't even think it would be 400,000. I thought median. it would be like. Right. So that's the average. So yeah. now, you, now you, you, you're a young man from Brooklyn, all right? <laughs> yeah. A crib is 800,000. That means you need to save $160,000 working a regular job to buy a house in New it's York City. It's almost impossible, bro. So um, every guest we have on, we ask for their kind of like parting comment, like a little ounce of gold, a nugget that our listeners should take with them. Um, just like, you know, whatever it may be. We've talked about a lot of stuff, but what would you like to leave everybody with? You know, like a little ounce of gold of uh, what what's important. Whether it's music, whether it's life, whether it's yeah. whatever. A little piece of advice. I want two from you. I want... One for the I kids from the hood and is. one for the kids trying to get in music. Work harder than everybody else because <laughs> nobody's going to work for you. I like that. Hard work harder than sad. everybody else because no one else is going to work for you. Well, as is our custom, we brought you an ounce of gold. One ounce of solid <laughs> <laughs> minted gold. That's nice. Pretty cool, It right? was worth more yesterday than it is today because the gold price went down a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that's a solid ounce of gold. Yeah. So we, we got, got a one, listener we got question. One listener too. question they sent too, it in. right? Which we're just gonna do cover cover quick. But um, and it's, it's interest it's interesting because you know Mike and I both went to colleges four year right out. You guys went right into business, right? Essentially, like just um, you think it's important. Like, do you in any way like regret not going? You think it's worth it? Yeah, you know, we can all answer this. Or you think it's important? For me? Yeah. How did you feel about that? I'll answer that question. I grew up in a different time when your network was outside mm -hmm. in the street, really. You had to go everywhere. Now I think your network are more, you're better off going to school and meeting people because people are outside like in my era. So I, I would recommend going to school. For me, it probably wouldn't have worked out as good as it did because I met more people doing what I was doing at that time, mm -hmm. running around like that. But now at this time where you have the internet and IG and things of that nature where you can make yourself, you could do anything online, it's better to go places and meet people where mm -hmm. you don't get stuck in your house and get too stuck online. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just two different eras. Got That's it. a good answer. Yeah. I got one more question before we leave. If you was a superhero, <laughs> who would your powers be? If I was a superhero. If you could be a superhero and you could choose your powers, who would it be? Just be invisible. There he is. Black people funny? would have been invisible. <laughs> That's it. That's me, it. him, and Coach K. <laughs> Mike thought it was I'm a terrible I'm superpower. If you, nah, if you're invisible, you could do anything. What did Mike, Mike want to do? You can Aquaman listen to everything. You can see he everything. You can be, watch uh, everything. Thor. You do that. Thor. Oh, that's Thor. right. Oh, with that hammer. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, 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 sit down, I'll sit down next to you in your office, invisible. I see all the deals we make it, and I just go make it. <laughs> I, I, want, I want a tour tower. Tour's got great hair. It does have great hair. All, all right, right thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Orlando, for real. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs>